Lots of people are going to be changing their cars this year and next year, and when they do, they're going to be considering more than what they might have considered previously. Not only are they going to consider do they want a saloon, a hatchback, an SUV, or what colour the car is, because some people choose their car based on simply what colour it is. Some manufacturers do fantastic colours. I absolutely love one of the red colours that Renault do. So I can understand that in some respects. But there's going to be other considerations now, and those considerations are going to be the drivetrain. Previously, um, going back years and years, all you had to consider was petrol or diesel. Now we've got a myriad of drivetrains. There's petrol, there's diesel, there's all sorts of variations of those. There's hybrid, there's mild hybrid, there's all sorts of marketing um, slogans associated with uh, hybrids as well. So you might think there are different kinds of them, but there is mild hybrid, which is basically a petrol engine and a small battery. Or there's plug-in hybrid, which has a bigger, stronger battery, which gives more power and also gives better range of 20 to 30, maybe even 40 miles these days. <laughs> What's also coming, as well as the myriad of drivetrains, is, I guess, a, a level of guilt that when you're changing your uh, car, you're going to now consider going electric in some form or fashion because it's now popular because it's mainstream, it's on adverts, on the television, everyone's talking about it. Even petrol head YouTubers are doing reviews of electric cars. Um, I just saw one the other day, Supercars of London, test driving a Peugeot E208, doing an economy run, for goodness sake. Um, it's really, really coming. And even he, even he admitted that as his daily driver, perhaps he should be driving electric now. So there's... A popular culture, I suppose, that um, the human beings follow what other people are doing. You know, we're a little bit like sheep at times. If everyone's doing it, well, we go off and do it. If that's popular at the moment, it becomes even more popular. Electric cars are mainstream. They are becoming popular. So a lot of people are going to consider going electric. So why did I? Why did I go electric? And what do I think of the choice and your logical decision-making process for how to decide petrol, diesel, hybrid, plug-in hybrid, fully electric. And I'm going to exclude hydrogen because that's just ridiculous at the moment. So the best way to describe this is go back through my history of cars because it, it describes how I arrived at this point in time. And I can effectively say that in my teens and early 20s, I didn't care about petrol prices. I didn't care about miles per gallon. All I wanted to do was drive fast, drive everywhere where me and my mates wanted to go and drink beer. But I grew up and uh, as a family man and lucky enough to have my first company car, I was given an Escort 1.4 LX. Now, it was supposed to do 40 miles to the gallon as a 1.4 petrol engine, but it only did about 30. It was awful. So I begged and pleaded with the company, could they please let me swap it for another car in the fleet? There must be an old one. I didn't care how old it was, um, but please let me have a diesel because I hear that they are more economical. So I swapped. I swapped for a Cavalier, uh, a really old, rattly, smoky one. It wasn't a particularly brilliant car, but it did 50 to the gallon easily. And that was my moment of light bulb coming on, that petrol engines were just ridiculously uneconomical as a family man. I was spending £150 a month on petrol. And back in the early 90s, I think it was about 92, 93 time, that was a lot of money to me. So swapping to a turbo diesel with 50 miles to the gallon reduced my cost, my petrol costs, to you know, a fraction of that. I was probably spending under £100 a month then. Having been converted to diesel, um, I was further converted to diesel by moving to a Vauxhall Vectra. I went to a two litre direct injection that could do 60 miles to the gallon. And of course, company car tax rates were becoming more and more favorable for diesels. So it made sense to stick with diesel. Anyway, I moved on from a Vauxhall Vectra to a Renault Clio and that did between 60, 65 to the gallon. And when I traded that one in, I went for another Renault Clio and that was 65 to 70 miles to the gallon. And then finally, my last diesel car was my Ford Fiesta in 2013. I bought a quite sporty looking one, a 1 1.6 turbo diesel that would do between 70 and 80 miles to the gallon. 
And with this car, that was the moment that I thought this might be the last petrol or diesel car I buy. Because what I'd noticed was the manufacturer's numbers for miles per gallon weren't going up very much. Technology wasn't changing fast enough for me to warrant to keep changing for another car that did one, two, five miles per gallon better. And then added to that, the manufacturers were lying to us more and more. Their test cycles that they were using are suited for testing. They're not suited for on-the-road driving. I used to always be able to get the miles per gallon figure of the combined cycle figure for the petrol and diesel cars that I drove. But then with the Ford Fiesta, I noticed I couldn't. And I noticed that the other manufacturers were claiming 80, 90, 100 miles per gallon. And then you get the uh, scandal with Volkswagen falsifying those figures. And it seems clear to me that they're telling us that the petrol and diesel cars are becoming cleaner and greener and more economical and more efficient. And that's the way to save the planet. That's the way you should continue to go forward. Rely on them continually improving the technology of engines, making them more efficient. But they're not. They're just telling us they are. And then in the background, when you actually drive the car, you know, it's a couple of miles per gallon better. Even when they're plugging batteries on and making it a hybrid, the difference between the standard petrol engine and then the hybrid version is typically really small. So this was my decision process. With diesels becoming unpopular because they're going to be banned in various cities and because they are emitting poisonous gases, the high compression ratios of the turbo diesels are causing some poisonous materials to come out of the exhaust. And it doesn't really matter how many DPFs and catalytic converters the manufacturers add on top of them or how they tell you they're going to improve the technology to make them cleaner. They're just not. They're burning oil and they are emitting fumes out of an exhaust pipe. With me worrying about depreciation values of diesel cars because they're not going to be as desirable, that's a good enough reason to say I'm not going to buy a diesel again. But if the alternative is to go from diesel to petrol, then that's going back to my 1992-1993 situation of can I really afford to lose that miles per gallon that I was getting from the diesel and drop to a petrol? So let's talk about hybrids and why I don't think I would ever buy a hybrid car. Firstly, they're more expensive than a standard petrol car. Secondly, on the road, they don't get very much more miles per gallon than the actual standard petrol cars can. Now, some might argue they do. You know, the Hyundai Ioniq Hybrid is a fantastic car and can get between 60 and 70 miles to the gallon, which is very, very good. But that's no better than the diesel car that I had before. And this is my point. If you look at, say, Toyota, Toyota advertised that their new... Um, I'm not even going to mention the wording for their hybrid, but their new hybrid cars um, can run on electric power for half of your journey. Half of all of your journeys, they say, will be run on electric power. And that makes you think you must be really green, you must be really economical, it must be saving you a fortune. But then in the background, when you look at the miles per gallon for those cars, driving normally, you'll get about 60 miles to the gallon. Well, hang on a moment. 60 miles to the gallon including half of that journey being driven on pure electric power, which isn't using any fuel at all, you think, then that must be the rest of the journey is only getting 30 miles to the gallon. Why would you want to buy a car with such an inefficient petrol engine? It doesn't make sense to me. You cannot believe the marketing hype from the companies that these um, mild hybrid cars, hybrid petrol electric cars, are the way forward. They're not. So that leaves plug-in hybrids. Well, what about going to a plug-in hybrid? And most people that I hear online, for example, say that it's a great alternative. If you're not ready to go full electric, you could go plug-in hybrid. But here's why I didn't, and then here's why I think you shouldn't either. And it's as simple as this. When you get in and test drive one of these plug-in hybrids, and when you own them, what you typically do, from what I hear and what I see and what I've experienced myself, is that you drive in pure electric mode and it becomes a bit of a game to see how little of the engine and petrol you can use. And that's brilliant because your miles per gallon will absolutely skyrocket. You know, it's not uncommon to have 600, 700 miles to gallon out of a plug-in hybrid. If you're going to drive it in pure electric mode and it only does 20 to 30 miles of range, remember if it says in the adverts it'll do 40, it'll be about 30 or maybe even 20 something, then why would you not buy the fully electric car? Because you want to drive it in electric. You're choosing to drive it in electric mode. You're choosing not to use the engine. You're enjoying not using petrol. 
And if you prefer to use the electric drivetrain, and that's part of the game, why not go fully electric? Why not have an electric car with not a range of 20 to 30 miles, but instead 150, 200, 250 miles? Or if you can afford a longer range EV, 300, 350 miles. Logic tells me that all of the other arguments are flawed. Going to a pure petrol car isn't enough efficiency. It's using too many fossil fuels. It costs too much. The depreciation on the car is going to be quite high. Going to a diesel, depreciation is likely to be even higher as the years creep on and they become even less popular. Miles per gallon wise, yes, they're not too bad. They're actually better than mild hybrids in a lot of cases, but there's going to be a stigma around them. There's going to be moments where you go out socially and people say, oh, you bought a diesel? Really? In this day and age? Why? Are you going to be that person that's part of the solution or are you going to be that person that's part of the problem that just doesn't give a damn, doesn't care about the environment, your neighbours, your friends, your children? You're just going to keep buying a diesel because you want to. There's going to be a different attitude towards people that buy diesels. And that leads you on to then the hybrid and we're going round in circles here, aren't we? Because no, the hybrid doesn't work because it's only a little bit more efficient than the petrol engine in the first place. And yeah, they're not that enjoyable to drive. What about the plug-in hybrid? I, I don't want the charging. The infrastructure is not ready for a full electric car. I'm apprehensive of going fully electric. So I'm going to buy an electric car with 20 to 30 miles of range and then drive it in full electric mode only and then charge it up when it runs out at 20 to 30 miles. No, surely you're not going to do that. Surely you're not going to say you're not ready for fully electric, but you want to charge your car every 20 or 30 miles. Where's the logic in that? Yes, it seems like a good idea because you've got a big petrol tank full of petrol and an engine that can get you as far as you want to go on those one-off occasions you're doing more than the 20 or 30 miles. You are better off accepting that charging is something new and it's only an apprehension until you've done it and done it frequently and then it's not an apprehension then you notice that actually charging out away from home isn't something you do very often the fear of doing something that you haven't done before is the problem and that's the hurdle with electric cars because it's change and we resist change rather than embrace it i mean just look at how many people didn't move from a what do you call them, a chocolate bar phone with, um, you know, texting with the two thumbs on the keypad. How many people didn't want to move from that because that's what they knew and they didn't want to move to a smartphone? But look at them now. They're swiping away and uh, as happy as anything using their smartphones. And it's exactly the same with electric cars, that the fear of changing from something we're comfortable with, petrol stations, buying it, just turning up two minutes later, well, three or four minutes later, uh, fueling your car and driving off the fear of having to wait and the fear of having to find a charger and will it be blocked will it be in use in reality when you own an electric car the experience is different there are no queues at the chargers that i've ever been to i've never had to wait for somebody else to charge i've always been able to charge when i wanted to and that's traveling in a variety of places around the country and what i've noticed in the 18 months is that there are a multitude more chargers available now than there were when I first got the car. So the situation is getting better, faster than the number of cars on the road are wanting to use the chargers. Because that's the other thing. Some people will think, well, what's the point? Because yes, they're going to double the number of chargers on the road. That's going to happen. But the cars are going to treble. So you know, everyone's going to want to buy electric. So then there'll be queues at the charging stations. Well, no, because most people don't charge at charging stations. Most people charge at home. So it doesn't really matter how many electric cars are sold now. It's not going to overburden the infrastructure. The infrastructure is going to continue to grow, continue to get better. And the unwarranted fears that you might have about going electric are going to disappear. So there's my thought and argument about why you should go fully electric. Because quite simply, petrol isn't efficient enough. Diesel, there's too many issues and too much stigma around. So even though it's economical and you might get a really good deal at the moment on a diesel car, then it's just a bad decision. So it's just something that your conscience at least should say, no, nah, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to buy one. The mild hybrids, well, they're going to sell because manufacturers are going to tell you that they're brilliant. But they're not. <laughs> they're just petrol cars with a tiny little battery that offer you a few miles per gallon more and you're paying a lot more for it. Now, 
Mild hybrid is not the way you should go. So if you're thinking of being electrified and going for an entry electric car, then think again, because it's not an electric car. It has a battery to help the petrol engine. It is still a petrol car. So please don't do it. Don't be fooled by the marketing hype. And don't think you're doing wonders for the environment because you won't be if you're buying one of those. And also don't think it's going to save you a fortune in fuel because you're going to be driving on electric power for half the journey because you're not. And that leaves you with the plug-in hybrid, which is the most viable alternative of still having a petrol engine under the bonnet, but actually driving on pure electric power. If that's what you need, if you need a comfort blanket of having a petrol engine still and a petrol tank and an exhaust pipe to make you feel okay, that you can get there to the next journey, then why did you choose a car that only has a battery range of 20 to 30 miles? Your argument is flawed. Embrace the electric way of driving. Embrace battery electric cars and buy one with a range that's adequate for the majority of your journeys. And if you have to charge out every now and then, honestly, it's not the end of the world and it's not difficult. Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, I hope that was enjoyable. I hope you don't mind my sort of rant about it. Uh, I'm not trying to say that I know everything and uh, it's my way. This is what you should do. You should all go fully electric because I do appreciate that everyone has their own reasoning for buying a car. And as I said, it could be as simple as you like the colour of a different brand and that brand perhaps doesn't do electric cars yet. So I wish you luck with your purchases. I hope you make the right decision and I hope I've helped influence a few people to avoid the marketing hype of the car manufacturers and decide what's right for you and right for the environment as well. Best of luck with that choice. See you again soon, everyone. Bye for now.